Hello everybody, this is Terry Jeanette with Tapping Flamingo. Today's video is all about the joy of blue. And we are going to take these beads that used to be on a very heavy necklace that broke. We're going to take them and repurpose them. In a previous video, I explained where these beads came from, why I have these beads, and what they probably were and why I am not putting them back like they used to be. If you want to check all that out, I'll leave a link up here to that video so you can do that. In that same video, I also addressed some wooden beads that were in that um, stash of broken jewelry, and I showed this necklace, which is an illusion necklace. I mentioned that I would probably show you how to do it at a later date. Well, today's the later date. We're going to make one of these beads into an illusion necklace. Now this particular necklace, I'm going to make a very simple necklace. I'm going to use one bead and then you need some type of uh, crimping beads. I like to use these clamshell bead uh, they call them um, crimp bead covers today, but back in the day when I was first learning to make jewelry, they called them uh, clamshell bead tips. And of course you're going to need some type of a clasp, make sure it works, and a jump ring. And I'm going to go ahead and put the jump ring and the clasp together. You also need something to measure with and you need some monofilament beading wire of some sort. Those of you who are beginners, if you're not for sure you want to continue on with making jewelry, if you're just trying to figure out if you like this or not, I suggest getting 20 pound um, test uh, fishing line. That actually works quite well and to be honest with you, it's pretty much the same thing as a lot of the monofilament beading wire. You're also going to need a few tools. I always keep my round nose pliers around. I find it easier sometimes to well, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later when we get to that point. Um, you'll need some type of flush cutters and you need some type of um, flat nose pliers. You could use bit nose pliers, but something like this. Now, like I said, this one's going to be very simple. We're only going to use one bead. This one I used... Um, three different elements in it. I had a big bead, I, the, I used some spacers, and then another little bead to the side there. But all we're going to do is use this one bead, and I'm going to put it onto the filament there, monofilament. And then we're going to go ahead and put our beads, crimp beads on there. The way I do it is I just string that on, I tie two knots, make sure they're tight and on top of each other. Then I slide my clamshell onto the knot, make sure it's inside there. And then I just gently squeeze it closed. Sometimes it does like to spin around, but just be patient with it. And then you have this little thing sticking out. This is when you use your cutters. Make sure the, let's see, see how it kind of scoops up? You want the, the fat, the one, the down end close to your, where you're cutting. That way it cuts very close. And I just kind of pull it a little bit. Clip it off of there, and then you want to feel around to make sure nothing is sticking out. If it is, you can just tuck it back in there. There's nothing sticking out. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put one side. I want to make sure this is closed. Looks like it's a little open. Let me make sure it's closed all the way. Um, but I'm going to put that into the little hook. And this is where sometimes I find a round nose plier is easier, but you can use your other pliers if that's all you have. And just squeeze it a little bit. And you have your clasp all intact. Now, we actually need two of these uh, jump rings. So I'm going to open it up. And thread it on the bottom of this lobster claw here. Maybe. <laughs> Needs to be opened up a little bit more. And then close it back up, which I probably should have used my little tool, but that worked. And now we're going to measure. This is one reason why I like to go ahead and put all this on. Now, I have to take into consideration, I measured this little um, clamshell here, and it's about a quarter of an inch. I want this to be an 18-inch necklace, so when I measure out, I need to, to make sure to add another quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and measure, starting with that at the very end all the way down, so that's 12 inches. And then to my six, and I wanna add another quarter of an inch. Boop, so about right there. And I need to take into consideration tying two knots. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, probably about another four inches. So I'm going to clip that. Make sure your bead <laughs> doesn't go with what you just clipped off. Put that back on there. All right, now to do this other side. And you're going to have to do some more measuring. And this can get a little tricky. You want to make sure that you're going to Keep your measurements. So that's at where I want it there. So, so I want to go ahead and tie my two knots about right here. I just have to slide them down till you get to that point. And once you get the first knot, the second knot's going to be pretty easy because you know where it is. But you do have to make sure they are on top of each other. Okay, once you've got them tied, you're going to slide your clam shell bead tip or crimp bead cover, whatever you want to call it, back down there. You're going to close it up. And then you're going to clip that off. Make sure nothing is sticking out to scratch you. Then you're going to Finish it up by putting the hook into your split ring or uh, jump ring, or you could use a split ring too. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I use the other. Go ahead and close it. Let's see. And you have yourself a finished necklace. Now sometimes this uh, monofilament, it because it's been on a spool, it tends to kind of, I don't know if you can see how it's all, um, see if I can get something, a dark, I don't have a darker background here, but I think you can tell how it's kind of spiraling around. It's going to do that, but once you put it on and the warmth of your neck kind of um, melts this a little bit. I mean, it's not going to melt it, melt it, but 
it's going to soften it, it will hang much better. In fact, it's already starting to hang when I hold it up like this. It's hanging quite well. And then for earrings, I just made some very simple ones. I just uh, put one of the blue beads on there. I did flank it with little tiny seed beads only because I didn't want the um, bead. I think it has a little bigger hole. I didn't want it to fall off of the head pin. But here is the set. And this is what it looks like on. Looks like it's just floating on your neck. I really, really like that. I guess that's why they call it an illusion necklace, because it's just an illusion. Here are the matching earrings. And with all those beads, I can make a whole bunch of these. Very easy to do. So that's it for the Joy of Blue Collaboration Challenge, which is hosted by Crafting and Relaxing. This is the December 2021 uh, challenge and I'm not for sure she's going to be doing it again next year so we shall see stay tuned I have really enjoyed participating in this and uh, I encourage you to go check out all the other people participating it's not just jewelry people but it's all types of crafting with the color blue just use the hashtag joy of blue and you can find us on Instagram and YouTube both so let me know what you think about the illusion necklace. They were popular many years ago, and I have a feeling it's probably about time for it to make its reappearance again. I actually really like them, and I bet most of you who like simplistic or minimalistic jewelry probably really like these. They also make a good stack piece. But let me know in the comments below what you think of an illusion necklace, and try making yourself a necklace like this. I'd also appreciate a thumbs up. Mostly, though, I hope you all have a fantastically wonderful day. This is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo signing out for now. Bye-bye.